I've had this Skywalker X8 for about 18 months. Over that time, I've had a couple of goes at making it fly as a VTOL quadplane, but mostly it's just been occupying a lot of space. The first fundamental mistake I made was mounting the arms for the quad motors quite far out on the wings in order to get lots of roll authority. However, the wings aren't very stiff out there and would bend a lot under the load, which meant that I've had to put in first one, then two, then three lengths of carbon fibre to stiffen that up, uh, along with the corresponding 3D prints, and so all of that added a lot of extra mass. I've given this project some fresh thought and I'm going to start again. I've got 100C batteries that should easily meet the power demand of the quad motors and I've decided a much better option for mounting the arms for the quad motors is to use the two carbon fibre pieces of tubing that do attach the wing but only come out a certain distance. Uh, however, I should be able to mount arms for the quad motors uh, in this area between the wing and the fuselage and that should be much stiffer and thereby save quite a lot of mass in terms of getting rid of the cross butt bracing that I had previously. I've 3D printed these little mounts for the quad arms uh, and they have a total length of 65 millimeters. That's just to help bring the quad arms out at least a little from the center of mass to help increase the roll authority. This time around I've also opted to go with square carbon fiber tubing. Uh, the reason is that you could increase your yaw authority if the quad motors are tilted in by two or three degrees and so using the square section lets me design that tilt directly into the mount. The actual motor mounts are something I designed a while ago and I've used on a few different projects. The nice thing is that they'll just slide onto the carbon fibre tube and there's a couple of M3 bolt holes so you can fix them in position. I always print motor mounts out of nylon uh, because it has a, a higher plasticity temperature and I actually have had drones fail in the past because when the motors get hot a low temperature plastic like PLA gets soft and, and can actually fail. Because the 3D printed mounts for the quad arms uh, will use up 65 millimeters of the carbon fiber tubes on each side, I'll actually cut new lengths of tubing uh, to make sure that the amount that it penetrates into the wing is the same as the original. When I was selecting the new tubing for these pieces, I took the opportunity to upgrade to um, uh, a two millimeter wall thickness. Uh, so these lengths I got are uh, 10 millimeter outside diameter, two millimeter wall thickness, and I bought them as one meter lengths. So I've got the brains ready to go. Uh, I'm using a Martech H743 wing autopilot um, for Tarba receiver. Um, the diversity antennas for the receiver. Uh, then I've also got the GPS and compass um, as well as a telemetry radio and the USB connection and speaker for the flight controller. Um, I mount all of this on a little 3D printed breadboard that fits neatly in the back of the X8. Um, and the reason I do that is if you need to rewire things or, or change things uh, you'll just be able to undo a couple of screws and remove the whole thing. The mounting bolts for the breadboard and anywhere else I need to put a penetration through the foam body of the plane. Um, I may just by heating up an M3 bolt and then that'll nicely pierce through the foam. In a previous incarnation of this plane I cut a couple of holes through the foam uh, so I could run power wires out to the ESCs and motors. Um, I've now mounted the 40 amp ESCs internally uh, just using some double sided tape to hold those in position. Now that the flight controller is mounted I'm almost ready to test this in copter mode. Initially I'm not going to worry about testing plane forward flight mode. Before that I need to test the sequencing of the motors that I've got everything plugged into the correct servo outputs on the flight controller and also the direction of rotation of the motors. Quadcopters can be configured in an X or H configuration. In this design I've implicitly assumed that I'm going to use H configuration which is why I've made these motor arms tilt inward by three degrees uh, rather than outward. It is important to remember the difference and if you're following this recipe and 3D printing these parts to choose H configuration because the 
uh, direction of rotation of the motors differs between X and H. Well, I was very happy to see that it did fly, if you'll call it that, on that first flight. There was a couple of mistakes I made. For one thing, I didn't follow the guidelines on the Arju Pilot Wiki to do the flight in stabilised mode. Instead, I was in position hold mode, which meant that the severe uh, oscillations in roll and pitch uh, meant that I, I didn't really have altitude control. Uh, so it went up, but it was reluctant to come back down. So make sure you do your initial flights in stabilise. Uh, the other problem was that the default gains, the PID loop gains on quad plane is quite high uh, because typically quad planes have quite a high moment of inertia. But because I didn't have the wings attached, uh, that meant that the gains were way too high and so that was the cause of that oscillation. Uh, so given that I will now need to work to tune the PID parameters, uh, I certainly won't do any further flights without having the wings attached. Uh, so I've come up with a plan for how I'm going to connect the wings and that's actually using the um, uh, original connection points that come with the X8. And what I've done is redesign these 3D printed mounts uh, so that they've got a little adapter flange here and then I can slide the uh, wing attachment uh, onto the carbon fibre tube, connect that to the 3D printed pieces with bolts and then connect the wing. Given that these little joiners for the quad arms are really the crux of what makes this build possible, it's worth doing a bit of a walk through some of the design features that I've incorporated into these. So firstly, there's two different pieces. This one mounts on the front carbon fiber tube, and this is the piece that mounts on the, the rear tube. Uh, now, both pieces are symmetrical, and uh, this piece can be used on the left and right front, and this piece on the left and right rear. So the pieces obviously require the 10 millimeter hole for the carbon fiber tubing that runs through the fuselage to slide through. And then there's also square holes for the uh, quad arms, the, the square carbon fibre tubing to slide into. And in fact, in this latest design, I added in two such holes. I noticed that half metre lengths of the carbon fibre tubing are much more readily available than one metre lengths. So the idea here is that if you need to or want to, uh, you can use a separate length for the front motor uh, to the rear motor. As we've already discussed, the through holes for the quad arms are inclined at three degrees in order to increase the yaw authority, uh, but I did intentionally put a flat top uh, on those um, so that they can be 3D printed neatly without um, a complicated or impossible bridging at the top. Um, there are also M3 bolts that uh, will go through both the pieces of carbon fiber uh, in order to hold everything in place. Uh, in addition, I designed in these uh, little openings for cable ties for the ESC cables, uh, given that they come along the quad arms and then need to enter the fuselage. These protruding sections are to uh, clamp the fuselage so that it doesn't come separated, uh, given that it's made of two different parts that are glued together. Um, and if you want, you can drop a couple of M3 bolts uh, through that which will help to offload a little bit of force to the bolts instead of it all being on the 3D printed part. This piece for the front section also has a little cutout as one of the sliding latches which connects the wing uh, sits just under the carbon fibre tubing and so that cutout is so that we don't obstruct uh, the operation of that latch. All of these pieces are designed to be printed without supports uh, that's why there's some of the funny angles and smooth transitions um, to ensure that there's no uh, overhangs. In my initial flights I did find the props were a bit prone to uh, cutting the grass uh, so my Thingiverse project also has uh, a couple of pieces to make simple landing legs uh, which are based on the same 
10 millimeter square carbon fiber tubing. One of the things to be aware of is the difference between pull truded carbon fiber versus 3K kind of cross hatch uh, tubing. So in the pull truded fiber, all of the carbon fibers run the same way, uh, which means that actually it's not very strong and can crack in response to torsional forces. Um, while that's not likely to be a problem in normal flight with the, the gyroscopic torsion from the motors, if you crash, then just make sure that you inspect any protruded tubing to make sure that it hasn't split. This is a different size, but, but this just shows um, uh, if you can get tubing like this in the 10 millimeter size, then this is what you want. Now that I've got a way to affix the wings, the next thing is to tune the PID parameters. Uh, you want to get these set at least to a point where it can hover reliably without oscillations in roll or pitch. As with traditional Ardu pilot copters, as soon as you are able to uh, get a few tens of seconds of hover time, you want to set the harmonic notch filters which will help to beat down any accelerometer and gyro noise. Um, the sooner you can get that done, the better. The process of tuning the PID parameters is again really nicely documented on the wiki, uh, but in essence you want to try and take off. If you start to see obvious oscillation once you leave the ground, uh, then land it, and usually you then want to try decreasing the, uh, the P and the I gain um, some amount, and try that again until you can take off uh, without uh, obvious oscillations. Reducing the gain too much is also a problem. Um, then the aircraft uh, won't be able to respond and maintain steady control. Uh, in my case, when I reduced the gains too much, it just flipped over. After a few iterations of experimenting with the PID gains, uh, I finally got this aircraft so that it would hover nicely uh, and I was even able to fly it in um, loiter or position hold mode. I usually get questions in the comments about some of the specific details of my builds. So preempting that, uh, this is using GART 500 kV motors and I'm flying 15 inch props. Uh, I have seen other people do the quad plane conversion on the X8 with much smaller motors and props. Um, if you're not familiar with it, there's a really nice tool online called eCalc, uh, which will let you put in the mass of your aircraft um, and then explore different motors and prop sizes till you find something that's going to work for you. Now that I'm able to take off and hover, uh, the next step for me, once I replace a bit of split pull through to carbon fibre, uh, will be to run a quad plane quick tune lure script that the Ardu pilot team have put together uh, and that'll help to further optimise the PID parameters. I, I think I'll finish this video here um, where we've now got a working VTOL in copter mode uh, and I'll probably make another video which talks more about the transition to forward flight and um, what I've got in mind for the tilt rotor um, actuators for powering that. Uh, my daughter always tells me that I've got to remind you to like and subscribe, uh, so like and subscribe if you like. Um, Thanks for watching and I hope this has been useful for your project.